Let's just look at this. So many variables. Oh, yeah. The, the tournament. It's hard to explain. Yeah. Show up. Show up. <laughs> yeah, get then there. Then we'll show you. Yeah, we'll show you when you come over. All right, welcome back, Black Magic TV. And tonight we have... I guess it doesn't matter about saying tonight, really, but uh, it is the evening time on a Monday. And we have a local entrepreneur, huge rock and roller, pinball, the the man who probably single-handedly made pinball cool in Kansas City again, Mr. Artie Scholes. What's up, man? What is up, dog? I've known Artie for, we were just talking about, I've known him a long-ass time, like 20-something years. Artie was a bartender pretty much everywhere back in the day. Well, door guy, bartender, bar back at Davies for the for the long run. Yeah, that's where uh, I first worked the door there in, and I'm going to date myself here, 1991 at Davies. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, not old enough to be inside of the bar yet, but Michelle would put me outside of the bar, right on the street, <laughs> on yeah. the street, because. If liquor control stopped by, I wasn't in the bar, mm-hmm. uh, and I would check IDs and take money from there. And uh, it was an interesting, definitely an interesting time back then because Ray's Playpen was still right next door, and the Dove Theater was across the street, right. which housed the bazookas at the time. This is before just Costco or everywhere. Home Depot ever had a dream right, right, right there on Main Street. Right, you know? right, right. <laughs> so... Uh, it was it was interesting. Now, you're not originally from Kansas City, right? No, I was born in. You were born in Kansas City. Yeah. Where are? But is your dad from here? Yeah. Well, okay. no. My both my parents are uh, from New York City. New York City, right? And then they. My moved dad was here. born and raised in Brooklyn, and my mom was born and raised in Greenwich Village. And they actually moved to Minnesota for several years, where both my sisters were born in Minnesota. Uh, my dad worked for um, a company called Emory Bird Thayer, which was like a Macy's or whatever. Right. Um, and he was the f- head of the floor covering department, and they moved him. They were expanding from the East Coast to the Midwest, moved him to Minnesota, six years there, then moved him to Kansas City, and that's when they went out of business. <laughs> right. <laughs> but then- he stayed in the floor covering industry because... Uh, he knew it, and he stayed in Kansas City. Yeah, they liked it here, obviously. Yeah, yeah so that's cool. What part of town did you grow up in, Artie? Uh, Westport. Oh, sick. So you're like an OG, real deal. Midtown. Midtown Through guy. and through 37th and Bellevue. That would have been more of a working class neighborhood back then than yes. what it turned into yeah. like after now, that. I mean, it was always Roanoke, but now right. those homes that were uh, dilapidated in the early 70s when... My parents picked it up. Right. Um, those are all million dollar houses now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Property value is something I'll never grasp exactly, but Yeah, I don't understand. I don't like even where your house is now, like to know what you got your house for and then to watch as a house around the corner sold for four hundred thousand dollars a year ago. It's like what, dude? It's insane. And I don't have a driveway. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> it is insane. I the Yeah. I never imagined uh I mean, I was hoping Strawberry Hill would pop off. You yeah. Know? Went a little different than I would have uh right. envisioned it. Right. I kind of w- hoped it would go through more of a crossroads period where artists and people that right. were looking for a cheap place to live uh, would flourish and can flourish. Um, but it just... COVID it, hit. It bypassed. COVID yeah. hit and it... Everything it bypassed that. Now it's at least my favorite thing to watch... Uh, I love watching that Neighborhood Association Facebook page that they have because someone, <laughs> yeah. add, I don't know, either you or Logan, somebody added me to it, but it's like, it's like the only Facebook page I look at because it just, I laugh. Oh, man, I had to hide that thing because it's oh, just dude. drama nonstop. This person's dog. Yeah. I heard gunshots. We, yeah. I know we live three blocks away from the project housing, but I heard yeah. gunshots. That yeah. still is the one thing that fascinates me about these people. 
We do hear gunshots. But, yeah. Uh, Shit, I had yeah. automatic gunfire, which was really weird for me, down by the park the other night. I was walking the dog. I had to do a, a duck and dive between the neighbor's houses because <laughs> I heard a car peel out right afterwards and started coming my way. I said, not today, bud. Right. You're not going to catch me. You're not going to ricky my ass. When I, twice when I've heard gunshots from my house, I've looked down to the river and seen a guy shooting his gun into the water <laughs> yeah 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 that's a lot of it I think, and i've always been there. like hey man try a pole yeah we'll work a lot better <laughs> yeah you're not really testing your aim out here yeah. it's probably some hobo just like i found this gun i wonder if it works <laughs> yeah oh shit when uh when he started the already owns the 403 club which is like a pinball bar um and it started all at 403 North 5th Street on 5th Street, which is now the home of our good friend Logan's yeah. Loogie's Bar, Hillsiders. Hillsiders. And boy, did he uh, transform it into something awesome. Yeah, right. I we, mean, compared to what it was. <laughs> right. To, uh, it different was, landlords. So my constraints were way different. But uh. yeah, it was <laughs> rad when you had it, though, because it was like. It was very rock and roll. Like, it was it very, was. like, it was very rock and roll. I mean, I tried to bring back, uh, I worked there in 2007 when Jessica Delich owned it. Um, and I tried to bring back that feeling because, man, was it such a cool place to hang out back then. Yeah. And then, I mean, when you first started, it was like literally, I remember it would be me and I would walk down there. And I'd have a six pack of PBRs and I would have like two blunts rolled up and I would smoke a blunt, drink three beers, and then you would put my beers on ice. We would meet, Randy would meet me Randy. there. And we'd drink beer and play pinball and we would be like you, me, and him just hanging out all right. night. Or Nick and Brian. They were, right. And Nick and Brian. <laughs> and it, 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 it just, it slowly grew. It did. I mean, those guys uh, really, you know. Although I facilitated the space um, and the love for pinball, they also, I right. mean, we were like, we're going to make a pinball place, you know, because yeah. there wasn't one. Uh, and they were like, you know, we'll hang out at your bar all the time if it has pinballs. So, yeah. <laughs> that was good for me and them. And, and then uh, now Nick has solid state, right? Yeah. And Nick has just, solid state. And they, they just reopened. Um, right. Right. I, I need think to get him on. It was the grand opening this last weekend. Yeah, this last weekend, yeah. Uh, and they've expanded their hours, so they're more, um, you know, friendly for people. You know, Nick, it's Nick's side gig. Right. He's got to eat, and uh, eating off pinball is not really a thing. So, right. <laughs> so uh, he has a real job. Um, but there's some other people in the community that are stepping up and, and, uh, and going to help him. Because that's more of like an arcade, right? Yeah. Like, that's their deal. It's like very family friendly. It and, is family friendly. Which you're, you are very family friendly too, um, to a point. Like You'll Saturday, hear just as many curse words at both places, I would yeah, imagine. Uh, yeah. I mean, is Phil playing there? You know, <laughs> right. probably gonna, somebody's going to be cussing. <laughs> Man, those tournaments are something else though. Watching them guys, me and Randy, me and Randy bowed out pretty early from the tournament scene because we were like, dude, dude we we just aren't that serious about it so Man, it's they, not for uh, the casual player no they take it to another level yeah you know the, there also is a large group of casual players who enjoy playing right um and go to the tournaments but uh they just like me have come to the uh conclusion that winning is it's not really an option. <laughs> what it takes it's just it's a, a level of insanity that like is just i mean the time that you have to spend to create first of all you have to be able to create that muscle memory um right. some people can't do that at all um and the time that it takes to create the muscle memory to be one of those t top tier players is i don't i don't have that much time. well beyond <laughs> that time dude it ain't like playing call of duty no. i can go download a game on my computer do the tutorial and i know how to play it Every time you step up to one of those pinball machines, there's nine million different things going on. Each separate each machine separate has... Each separate machine has its own little sub games, right. and inside that sub game is another sub game, and it's just like, yo, Eric and I show up, and we just, uh, you know, 
flip balls. Right. Yeah. <laughs> this and, is how it goes with me and Eric. And that's still fun. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's what the beauty of uh, pinball yeah. is. Go hit the jukebox, which jukeboxes rule now because of the internet jukebox, and they finally put like cool music into them. There's good and bad. And then you also that. have a lot of like <laughs> you get like when you get to pick the shit that's like on deck. Right. Like, well, the stuff that gets played the most gets priority played to like one credit right. eventually. Um, right. They just uh we had a hard drive go out in ours, so they just replaced the hard drive in it, and I'm having to rebuild back up oh, the, no. the one credit plays. Oh, uh, but no. it'll get there. Uh, yeah. But it's good and bad, you know, because, yes, you can play just about any song you want, but so can everybody else. <laughs> yeah. I do like the skip feature, though. That's a nice one. Pay to play, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can priority play. I don't have the skip feature active. Yeah. Like nobody, uh, I had one staff member, um, many, many years ago that was like, Oh, I just skip every song I don't like. And I'm like, well, you can't really do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah people you know, for that. Because people paid for those songs. Uh, so my favorite is I disabled that, that a long time like, ago. Get out. Like, uh, chip would always like chip Anderson, would, we'd be somewhere and he'd pull his phone out and he'd just get on that app for the thing. Yeah. And he'd be playing the dumbest songs at other bar at all these different bars where oh, he yeah. wasn't even at. And now he thought it was the funniest thing, man. He did. Uh, he used to do that all the time. He'd yeah. always be like, I can't remember what song hey, Artie, he had. What's Sammy's? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's the closest bar up the street. He's like, Sammy's oh, okay. the weirdest bar in <laughs> the weirdest bar in uh well was. I don't know what it is now. It, back in the day when I lived across the street, it was like a very Yeah. Very sussy because a guy pulled up every day in a Cadillac that wore like a sweater and he had like a ponytail and gold <laughs> chains and shit with a briefcase and he'd walk inside for about thirty minutes and leave. I'm pretty sure that's uh the owner of Fat Matt's. Because they used be. to own Sammy's too. Could be, could be. <laughs> uh, Joni's husband. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't been in there in years, man. You no, know, I haven't. I quit drinking, so uh, my I limit my other bar time to uh, shows for the yeah. most part. Well, I do. You know, I go. I'll come play pinball occasionally. I'll go. See Dan and them down at Lucky Boys. I'll go there for food. And I, love that and place. I go up to Logan Spot. Uh, I go there sometimes. Not as much since Tuber doesn't work there anymore. Yeah. Um, and Uncle Jerry. But uh, also, I still go by there sometimes. Um, yeah, Uncle Jerry. They do shows. Shout out to Uncle Jerry. He's now a FedEx man in North Carolina. Oh, dang. Shout Delivered. out to Uncle Jerry. Uncle Jerry. He's still alive. He has not died on his motorcycle. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, I Blue Palm though, been there a bunch. Roxy's new Roxy spot, spot and where Dan. Mockingbird used yeah. to be, and Dan. Dodi I haven't at. been up there yet. It's awesome, but man. that's just one of those ones where it's like I don't even drink NA cocktails. You know, what right. I, mean? I don't I like so. It's like I. It's not. I, I'd love to go up there sometime, like before they're open, and just see it. You know what I mean? Right. But I don't want to go. I don't like taking up a space somewhere. Like, if I'm not patronizing, patronizing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'll I mean, go to Logan's, I'll go to a show, pay my five bucks to get in for the bands, and then right. I'll grab some waters, I'll throw whoever's bartending a 10 spot, even at your place. Right. Like, I'll get like a topo and a, a tip heavy always when I go out so that nobody gives me shit, you know right. what I mean? I mean, at this age in our lives, like, if you're giving shit, for somebody who doesn't drink then you're doing it wrong yeah 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 for <laughs> sure but you know but also i know that like but if i'm sitting down somewhere with some other people that they might be having one or two but i'm taking up a seat of somebody who might be feeding this person right five. i just try right. to make up for it when i go out oh for sure for sure uh you've never worn out your welcome anywhere <laughs> uh no well I, I back in the day i did a few times but right. not really no. no uh i try not to i try to I, I but also i i don't like going to places where i have so many friends that own businesses and that i think are rad that i would just rather like i can go see dan at lucky boys and then i could right. even though like i don't you know i'm vegan so i don't really 
my palate's pretty thin. I, they still got something I can have, and then I'll go fuck with them at the pizza place. And then right. Wes and them are next door now, so I can go see everybody at the tattoo shop. Man, that's and, a, that's become an awesome little corner. And uh, kudos to those guys for for opening a rad spot. And I'm stoked for them. There's two more buildings and the bridge. I mean, yeah, there's it should be it, and the whole West Bottoms thing, like right. There's, yeah, they're 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 checking along, and that they're rules. about to flood that place with a lot of people, or hopefully, yeah, you know. Well, dude, and there's been times where we go to go to your bar, and we pull up, and it's like, God damn, there's nobody here. But then we go inside, and it's like, holy shit, and it'll be packed, and that's when I realized, like, oh, all these people walked here from like their <laughs> houses, right? And then I looked around, and I was like, yo, this is like, because I lived a block away, right? And it's like. These are not the same people that lived here when I lived here. No, no, <laughs> at it's all. Ch- it's changed a lot. Yeah, um, my aunt and uncle left Prairie Village and they live on Sixth Street on the on the Triangle now. Right, like we're by the Catholic Church. They live right there, and it's like, yo, that that kind of tripped me out. But it's red because now I'll just be driving down the road and I'll, I'll like flip a bitch and catch my aunt and uncle. You know, I've noticed uh, that the uh, neighborhood association is full of people that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a few that I do, um, but there's been a lot of change. I don't, I haven't been to a meeting in a long time with an eight year old. Uh, it doesn't really transfer to go into adult meetings on Tuesday nights. <laughs> yeah. No, not at all. Somebody, people start moving over here now in yeah. my neighborhood and it's just like, boy. Yeah. Like you start seeing, you start seeing the flags go up. I'm going, oh boy. I was walking the dog one day and I was over there by the big church, by the big cathedral. Some guy and his wife, they're like looking at me crazy. And some guy's like driving the wrong way down the road. So I just stood in the middle of the street and I'm like yelling at the guy. I'm like, I'm gonna <laughs> fucking kick your mirror off, dude. What are you right. doing? You're going to hit somebody. Right. And, and these people are looking at me like, oh my God. And then they came over like, hey, we're mike and sally or whatever their names were i was like cool dude like uh yeah and they're like we just moved here and i'm like sweet welcome, welcome. uh watch out for guys like watch that. out for yeah watch out for these idiots and they're like <laughs> okay they're like are you going to the neighborhood meeting and i'm going oh boy oh boy who's putting this on bet there weren't no mexicans there right <laughs> <laughs> yeah um I haven't been to a neighborhood meeting in a long time, so I don't know what they're up to. But, I don't know. Uh, I always see him. I like uh, I, I, my favorite. I, if I catch him at the Merc, because my aunt and uncle will be there, I'll just stand there and like Forrest Gump stare at them through the window at the right. grocery store. And then everybody like at one point they're all turned up, looking at me like, "What the hell?" <laughs> right. But now we got the print shop is on the hill on the hill in Casey's building. Yeah. Right. Uh, two doors down from my yeah, house. Yeah. Two doors basically. down from your house. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I catch Jay. I'll run around the corner and. I try to run up on Jay and freak him out, but he he never falls for it. Yeah, he uh, he wasn't flying any flags this year. Uh, no, but I he's, I'm sure he's doing cartwheels. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, you know I I have a pretty hard stance against all the flags, man. Like, right. Me too. If you got the thin blue line flag, anti-American. The thin red line flag for firefighters, anti-American. Rainbow colored American flag, anti-American. Get that shit out of here. Keep that shit red, one, white, and blue. There's only one American flag. There's only one American flag. If you modify it at all, you're anti-American. I don't care what you say. That's my stance on it. I mean, that's what the Constitution says. It so, is. So, uh, you know. Yeah, everybody just wants to be... It's like, Not that it's always ready. Right everybody's got to <laughs> decorate shit. And it's like, no, nah, that one was cool. We leave that alone because that stands for the equality of all of us. Right. Building a better life. Oh, nobody cares about that anymore. No, <laughs> that's also a thing no one cares about. Yeah. How can we divide these people? This is what the new narrative is. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's that's been it and the, a lot of people fall for that. Yeah. That's why I don't I'm I'm OG punk rock guy. I mean, like all establishments suck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Oh, you thought this was uh, cool. <laughs> yep, just yeah. going to be the same no matter which way it goes. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't it's matter. There. I mean, it does to a lot of people. It matters a lot more than it ever did, and and uh, you know I hate to see a lot of people marginalized for no fucking reason at all. Right. But um, but yeah. Yeah. Also, I think a lot of people fall for it's it's all like, you know, 
one side's owned by corporations that want to go to war and the other side's owned by corporations that don't want us to own anything and want all manufacturing plants to be back in America. So it's just like one it's still owned by the corporate interest of yeah. not us. Not mine. Not mine. Yeah. My interest involved this like uh eighteen block radius yeah. that we are housed in right now. Right. I try to worry about here. Right. And the people that are here, and I don't worry about the rest of the... And man, they're making it harder and harder to do that every day. Yeah. The UG is... Uh, oh, these corrupt bastards in the unified government, man. Something else. Dude. I wish they would fix a fucking bridge. That's <laughs> yeah. That's all I gotta say. I, I wish they would fix that bridge. I wish they would uh, figure out... They, done, they put these signs here to block the road off a month and a half ago. And haven't even come near doing the sewer over here yet. And we're all like, eventually, we all just moved the signs out of the road. Because we're like, what are we doing, man? Like, right. you, got, you, got, you got shit in people's yards, like concrete structures in everyone's yards. It's like, get out of here, dude. You're not going to do this in the middle of winter now. Right. But, you know, there's some kind of racket going on when the electric company is owned by the government that also runs the water bill. Right. That also does everything else it's like what the hell man it's a lot of uh it's a lot fluff this kid getting this damn dog the damn dog is tripping (laughs) she has one job during the podcast (laughs) keep the dog quiet (laughs) yeah keep the dog quiet what uh what year did you open the bar Artie? 2011 right 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 and now what um when you first opened it, you were still bartending in other places, right? Or were you I just... still bartended at Riot Room. Right, right, right. Um, a few nights. Uh, what was like the big motivator? Were you just ready to be your own boss, or was it? I was getting old, man, and that's yeah, and that's two... a young kid's game. Yeah, doing the shows and bartending in Westport. St- yeah, downtown. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. You need I had. Chiller. I was over it. <laughs> yeah, because now you don't even really bartend, right? No, no. Yeah, I that's don't. been the way for a few years now, right? It like, has been. I mean, I'll jump back there if I have to. Right. If someone's sick or can't be there, I can bartend for a while. I I try not to though. Um, my patience, along with my desire to drink, my patience with drinkers has gone downhill a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, no, I've had this. I've had. I have a similar thing with mine because I'm like ten years deep now. Right. So it's really hard sometimes to, um, you know, go somewhere. And it, it, shows get hard sometimes, depending on where I'm at. Like I love the Union Library, and we do those events there. And then sometimes oh, that place it's just is like, amazing. If I'm not there with other people to sort of like diffuse diffuse the other idiots around me when it goes down it's just like a thing where it's like i gotta get out of here because i can't deal with this shit house dude that's like yeah you know but i've never i I don't even think i've ever seen a confrontation i'm sure it's happened but i've i i can't remember a time i've ever seen a confrontation at your bar oh there's been a couple but right uh... but nothing like since I got rid of the pool table, zero. No shit. <laughs> yeah. That's something. It was all about the pool table for whatever reason. I remember. Or the people that came in to play pool. And I, you know, right. I don't have anything against people that play pool. But uh, when that shooting happened at Tequila KC or whatever. Yeah. And they were, the initial report was like, oh, it was a fight over a pool yeah. thing. And uh and then the dude came in and shot a bunch of people. I was yeah. like, oh, no, we won't be having any more fights over pool. That's for sure. Yeah. And that was <laughs> Not a to whole mention other... that that thing, you know, That's for as much real idea. estate as a pool table takes up and as little money as it makes. It's not uh, worth it. It's not worth it. No. Not when you could put, you could move some tables and have two other pinball machines right there on the wall. If right. If you wanted to. Like, right. Uh, yeah no not worth it and you're stacked now on machines right like how many yeah. machines you got in there now 11 right do you still have the dartboard yes still got dartboard we still got the dartboard that doesn't really get in the way of no. anybody or anything and that's know? like a weird group and people of don't dorks f- that play yeah. darts so yeah they don't fight over that like they do pool no <laughs> that's like that's a, a simple that's a game for simple-minded people there yeah exactly that's 
I love darts too. But you used yeah. to have to be smart to play darts, but then right? they made those electronic machines, and now just any any Tells old idiot everything. can play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember when you used to have to keep score? Right. <laughs> like, fuck that, dude. Chalk on the chalk on the board on next the board. to it. Would open up. Had the board next to it. Shea Charlie's man. Yeah, they're still going strong. I don't go over there anymore either since I'm out of Westport. But yeah, I don't. Uh, man. I, as far as I know, it's still a dart bar. Yeah, I, they just opened that punk club uh, skate bar that was in St. Oh. Joe. They opened that in Venus's old spot. Right. Um, Nick's and got a couple having, pinball machines in there. I think so. They've been having shows because that's their whole jive. But then also, like, five people just got murdered or shot right out there in front of that recording studio a couple weeks ago. So that was a whole thing. Oh, dang. Which is right there in front of that bar. And it's just like, man, Chloe lives over there. And I'd leave her house. And, like, on a fr- Friday night, you drive through Westport. And it's like, dude, this looks like the slurge of society now. <laughs> like, this isn't even like it used to be. Like I thought it was all, like, frat boys. and I... Yeah, the young people are weird. Dude. They, bros. They, yeah, it's weird. They, it's a, younger people are. It's a weird vibe out there. You know, you used to be able to. We come from the age where, like, to a point, you could kind of tell a book by its cover. Right. Like if you saw somebody wearing a band shirt or something, you kind of knew what that person was about. Right. Now you see some lady wearing. Prada and she's got on a Slayer shirt and it's like, oh, you don't even, you're, this is just a fashion thing. Like it's right. not even a real deal. Yeah. I don't get over there much anymore. Uh, I still love some of those places. You know, I don't know what they're like now, but Harry's was always near and dear to my heart and buzzard of course. But, uh, I just don't. Yeah, Buzzard was always ruled back in the day. Yeah. But all that, that that's the only place that's left, I think. That's like an independent, I guess. Oh, uh, Harry's too. Yeah. Uh, is, was it, is it Kelly's on the corner? Oh, there? Kelly's is still there. Yeah, yeah, it's still there. But that was always like the adult bar. You right. know what I mean? Even right. back in the day, that's where the old Irish dudes went to. Like, I mean, I can't, who knows? Red. I don't know. The don't, old Irish bartender there, Red. He's yeah. been there for I don't know how many years. But. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, how long, how much longer can a place like that last when everything around it's all, it seems to be like turning into the corporate America over there. They right. built that shit in front of the buzzard. And it's like, right. When they built that, I was like, there's a Taco Bell can- cantina. Yeah. There's a Taco Bell. Like, <laughs> what are we doing here? It's certainly not a uh, historic old Westport anymore. <laughs> no, I think I think when that um I think I don't think anybody in the Westport Planning Commission was sad when Timmy and them closed up shop after the pandemic oh, in, no. the, in the certainly happy to see us go from there. Yeah, which <laughs> them go. that place I mean I was long gone before <laughs> the music scene then, has but, suffered greatly because of the loss of that bar. For sure. Dude and Davies, both. and Davies. I we were. I was there, dude. I was yeah, there the, the night it burned night. down. Because I I harassed Mikey because it was Chico Thunder's halftime extravaganza band <laughs> touchdown band. And yeah, and I the touchdown band. And I told Mikey, I was like, dude, if you have the entirety of Creighton '66 here, and you guys do not play Creighton '66 songs, you're kind of pussies. Right. And then he's like, all right, fuck you. And then they went and played that, and then the bar burned down. So I have no. I can only believe that due to the the rock and roll of Creighton 66, the bar burned down. Yeah, I but. mean, uh, what a way to end an era. Um, I wish I was there. I was getting texts from Moki. Yeah. Uh, we, of course, we didn't know then that it was the last. The last, the last night ever. But, um, God, that place ruled. It I too. was parenting, so I could not be there. I saw so many, like... Played there, saw so many red shows, watched it as it went from the one side to the other side, yeah. to the, the sound system getting better, and then it was just like, the, ad, the second bar got added, and That's like, kind of where I, uh, Michelle liked to always upgrade stuff, you know? Yeah. And I kind of like to keep it 
I don't have a sound system like that, but uh, right, no, but you've like you've you've always you started with like three pinballs, and then you got yeah. more, and then more, and then now you're like really on top of it, like getting the all new the game. newest games. Yeah, it's it's different than it was back then when we were trying to find any game we could and bringing it back to life, and then keeping it going. Uh, and now they're making so many games. Right now, like, I just have to get the new ones because that's what people want from us for the most part. Now, how does that work already? Do you, is that like, are they leased through a company? Do you have to no, buy those? You have to buy them. So you buy them. <laughs> yeah, man. And then you hope that it's not too bad of a turd where you can turn around and sell it down the road. Uh, you know, and recoup, recoup. You don't money. ever recoup your money a dollar a play. <laughs> right. <laughs> Unless it's like Attack from Mars, which I just think, cause you know, back has in the been day, there for years, but um, there would be like vending, there'd be like a vending company who would come in and they would put the machines in and then you would get a split or something. You know what I mean? Like, right. I can't believe nobody's picked that sort of realm back up again. Well, people don't l- like that. Yeah. Those vending guys and, you know, those, that's the way I knew about pinball forever because that's the only way it was done forever. Right. Um, so kudos to them, but they, they, they don't really care about pinball as much. Right. <laughs> they care about quarters. Right. So, um, they don't keep the machines as nice. They don't it's do like- as much maintenance. They're only there once a month to empty. They don't, the newest code won't always be on there. The right. newest, you know, and as an enthusiast who also owns a pinball bar, I really try to keep the enthusiast part where all of our machines are in great shape. They all work. If they do break, it's they're not down for very long. Um, right. And they're clean. You know. Yeah. No, like I, you know, when. I came and met you to get the checks to pay the city to block the road off. You were just like, like, look at this. I've just polished them all. And they yeah. all look like they just came out of the package. You yeah. Know? And that's, you know, part of our niche. That's right. where we fit into the pinball, you know, the super nerds right. love us for that reason. <laughs> right. Well, and that's sort of become your job, right? It's like yeah. curating and caretaking the pinball part of the business and you've got other people to worry about the hospitality and serving the customers. Right. Right. Yeah. I just make sure the lights stay on and that we have the newest pinballs that work really well. Yeah. And how often do those things come out now? Like, uh, three or four years. Really? Yeah. Yeah. There's so From many. Stern is the one. I, yeah. I remember when Stern like made the one and everybody's like, Oh shit, it's a new one. And Donnie did the art. I think, was it the Metallica one? Yeah. Like the first one. I got that one. And then it was the, there's the PBR one. And then there's the, there's the Aerosmith one that Don, Donnie did the art for a lot of those. He did, man. He, uh, he's done a lot of art for Stern. Yeah. Dirty Donnie um, rules. He does. And I love his stuff. He's the dog. Yeah. He's a big, uh, influence on Nico and I. Yeah. Always has been. I'll have to show you this uh, helicopters back glass looking thing that I bought that he did. Oh, yeah. I know. I already know exactly what you're talking about because it was like the cover of this book that he put out, I think. Oh, nice. Yeah. I had it fr- you have framed that, on my you wall. You have that yeah. helicopters back glass. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think it's he made that. It's just a poster that. of it. Yeah. Um, I don't know that it was ever a back I think glass, it's just. Back I think it's just a, a poster. Yeah. But I have. Cool. um one of the first 50 in my living room is that do it in a van with the van on it. Oh, yeah. That's like one of 50 from uh, that thing's. I've had that thing almost 20 years. Nice. Yeah, he does amazing stuff. Yeah. But Stern's really the only company uh, that's cranking out three or four titles right. a year. Um, Jer- Jersey Jack and Spooky. There's a couple of other. St- more What's recent company? startup companies, Didn't but Gottlieb used to make pinballs back Gottlieb, in the day. Yeah, they because they made all the handheld um, games in the nineties right. too. The little two yeah. D handheld That's what, games. And they went to that and and uh, slot machines. Oh yeah, after pinball slots. died. Yeah, slot machines are crazy, dude. Yeah, slot machines are crazy now. My grandpa watches people play slot machines. He goes to the casino and shit, but like. Dude, you, I, I'll go to my parents' house, and he'll be up there, television on 900, 
you know what I mean? Turned all the way up. It's got, he's got like a 70 inch TV and he's just in there in his recliner watching these people and they're fucking dazzling the screen. And I'm just like, yo, what? This has, that's when I go, this has to be a simulation. Right. It's bad enough I'm watching people play video games. Right. You guys are watching people gamble at a casino on slots, on penny slots. It's crazy what people watch these days. Oh, dude. <laughs> I do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're watching us right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it is wild. Uh, I, I try to at least get some historical and, you know, some sort of right. like history or something about people. Right. Uh, yeah. Oh, I guess back to the original question. Yeah. So it was just like, you know, I'm tired of, I can't keep up with this rat race of fucking Westport. Like, let me oh, yeah, get yeah. my own spot. I was and about do to my turn 40, thing. man. And, and, uh, you know, that's, that's a young man's game. I was, I was over it. I, I served my time. Yeah. And the owner of the building, uh, Ever since I worked for Jessica, um, in 2007, you could still smoke in bars over here. Right. But you couldn't in KCMO. Right. So all my Westport people were like, what? You know, or my smoker friends, which was a lot of them. Everyone. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Back when everyone still smoked. um, We're like, well, hell, we come over to see you. So, um the owner of the building, it, eventually Jessica went out of business. Uh, tragically, th- she was open right during the time that they ripped up the entire street. Oh, yeah, to do, yeah, yeah. You know how the brick sidewalks are all yeah. pretty now? Um, yeah, they ripped that whole road up forever. For like a year and a half, dude. Yeah. And it was like a literal act of God to get down there. You really had to know how to get there and you really had to want to go because you had to go back on Thompson and you kind of had to find your way. Um, and you know, I don't know that anybody would have survived that. So, um, the owner of the building after she ended up going out of business started coming to Davies and being like, Hey man, you know, your nights were always good. Why don't you, do this you know uh and it was right about that time i actually went to work for crosstown station for a minute uh left davies to go to crosstown station um right about that time and uh i was like no i'm doing this thing and then riot room i went to riot room after i walked out on crosstown station after what was crosstown station that was a bar behind Mercy seat, dude. That okay. was like a live venue for a minute. Okay. And the owner. Oh, so where Zarbar ended up being. No, no. no. Behind. Oh. It's like a Christian church or something. Oh, yeah. it was in that big place. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's like right. right behind the mercy seat where that parking yeah. lot was. That was cross down station. And, and, um, I do remember that now. I remember that. The now. owner of that place, uh, and, his older sister and I were like bros in high school. Um, we used to go to all the concerts at Sandstone, hang out together. And um, so when he was opening it, you know, he was like, oh, hey, man, you know, uh, how do I do this? How do I do this? You know, because he knew I worked at Davies forever. And so I was kind of helping him do some stuff. And then eventually he's like, hey, man, uh, would you consider like coming here to – train my door staff and bar backs, um, you know, on how to crush it in a live music venue. So my bartenders can just focus on crushing, selling drinks. And I'm like, yeah, sure. I'd be happy to, you know? Uh, and he was like, you know, then we'll move you to bartender, you know? Well, three weeks in, I've only worked door shifts yeah. and I'm like, this is not going to work, you know? Yeah. And I went to the manager at the time was a 26 year old kid, uh, who was friends with the owner. Um, and I was like, Hey man, like I can't do this anymore. (laughs) So like I either need some bartending shifts or I'm going to have to go get another job. Uh, cause this is not what I signed up for. And he was like, Oh, you have to pay your dues. And I was like, I think you were like nine. (laughs) 
when I started working in a bar. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. You weren't even born and he's yet, like, dude. Uh, Davies, and I was like, okay. I just turned around and walked out yeah. because clearly uh, I can't work for that kid anymore. No. And I went to Riot Room. It was like the third day they were open. Yeah. And I went up there and uh, the fucking was Houston talking to Ritter, Dutch. The Goose and Ritter fucking brothers. Yeah, right. Well, Old Robbie Dutch. Robbie Old, was still, still in charge then. Yeah. Uh, you know, not that he was ever in charge of anything. Robbie was in charge of a lot of bars that we later found out he really wasn't in charge of. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what nobody... happened to that guy? I have no idea, man. He's fucking disappeared. I mean, because he was in always in the mix at the union when I worked there. Yeah, he. Uh, Him and Megan. After he got chased out of Riot Room. Yeah, he ended up over he there. He tried to get in at the union, but. I think Megan was like, no, dude. Yeah. Like, whatever. I don't know. But, um, yeah. So Dutch was like, I was telling Dutch what had just happened at Crosstown Station. And he was like, you don't have a job? And I'm like, no. He's like, can you bar back on Friday? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, yeah, sure, man. Uh, <laughs> that would be great. You know, yeah. thanks. And uh, I think it was 30, 30 minutes and, uh, you know, when Right Room first opened, it was off the chain every night, seven yeah. nights a week, uh, just because it was new and in an entertainment district. And, and they had live bands every night. Right. Big, and, and big bands. And some cool people worked there. And, right. You know, it was kind of... The radio station was heavy on doing shows there. Like, 96.5 was always bringing bands in to go right. there. And... Um, and it had already been, it was the hurricane. So right. it was like the hur- the new hurricane for right. younger people. Right, 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 like, right. And I think 30 minutes into that, my first bar back shift, Dutch was like, dude, will you serve these people some drinks, please? Yeah. <laughs> you know? So I just started bar knocking them out. Yeah, and I don't, yeah. I never bar backed or did anything else after that. You yeah. Know? <laughs> it's too bad Crosstown Station couldn't figure that out. <laughs> yeah, but, old Crosstown. But they, actually they good survive. for me because, uh, you know, working at Riot Room is where I was able to just stack paper. And that's how I started 403 because yeah. that guy was, you know, still after me, still after me, you know. And after almost five years of bartending the Circle Bar every weekend, I was like, okay. You know, I had stacked enough paper that I was like, I'm going to give this a try. It's either going to yeah. work or it's not, you know. Uh, it wasn't so much money that it was like, I couldn't lose it. I mean, you never want to lose money, but uh, but the initial seed was only $15,000. So, oh, yeah. Uh, I was like, okay. And it would probably I cost you that. like double or triple that now to do the same thing. Oh, I wouldn't yeah. even want to... F- fucking no think about it yeah dude it costs so much more to just operate i'm right. i work two other jobs dude i don't No, i know you do 403 club don't pay my <laughs> yeah a lot of people anymore. don't understand that that already also has other gigs that he works like he's at this point you own that building which that's a investment for yourself and you've created a place where people are making a living your bartenders all make their living and, they and, do yeah. and they crush it and then but yours, it's really for the love of the pinball. Thing. It is. And, you know, I do get some money off the pinball right. machines. Um, but also you've... But uh, I also sink money right back in. Yeah, you just put the roof on, machines. which was like a big thing that we were 30, trying to do the events for. Was 35 to grand. It up. I was pretty stoked when, after our first car show, you were like, yeah, you guys busted out the Sunday record yeah. out the water. yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll have to do that. Keep doing that. Oh, no, we are. Uh, yeah. Memorial Day weekend, we'll be there. Heck yeah. And Labor Day weekend. Even though the fucking Lowrider guys got Lowrider magazine to come to town and do a goddamn show on Labor Day weekend. Thanks a lot, dudes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was like, what are you guys doing? This coming, of, this coming year. It's like, of all the weekends, you guys pick the one that there's already several car events on. Is that right after the... <laughs> right after the Wild West Showdown, too. Oh, it's like, what? <laughs> what are you guys doing? Oh, whatever. Yeah, that that's sucks. That's their bag. But yeah, that was even radder but, that we got Zach down there this year to do, yeah. do the showdown. I've been trying to get him to come over and be on soon. He came over and approached me, and I was just like, yep. 
Yep. Yeah. I was like, you talk to the city, get the streets closed down, and uh, yep. Yeah. And I, I'm open. To then he called me, whatever. and I was like, yeah, I don't give a shit, because yeah. you ain't going to do nothing but help what we're doing. So. Right, right. Uh, and it's the perfect little peninsula. Dude, it's like the to... perfect thing. And, and now I know, like, actors, you know, seeing how Zach got the road blocked off, so it's like, cool, we know how to do that now. But, like, the way we were blocking the road off, also chill. Right. But uh, plenty of room to grow into something as big as we want it to be. Yeah, for and sure. And it's cool. Like, I also dig, like, this is my whole thing is, like, I'm not, we're not charging people. Right. Like, you know, Artie's covering the permit to the city, which is, it's, thankfully, they cut us a deal and we get that block party permit, which is way cheaper than the right. other option. And then Nico and I want to have, we have a free event where anybody can come. And that way, you know, it, 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 we're selling merch. We make our little bit of change for putting on the event and covering the flyers. And then you get your change through the bar and the pinball. And then yeah. everybody has a good fun day. And Justin and them come sell out of pizzas every year. Yeah, and yeah. Everybody that does anything seems to do well. Fuck, we had people from Texas this year vending. We had people from St. Louis. Uh, people from all over the metro all different kinds of cars so it's cool I, I'm, I'm very stoked on how that's the first year was good we had to make some changes um, made those changes and it, it was even better this year I yeah. think than it was uh, oh, last year oh I agree year. and I imagine it'll just and the thing in May there. like that's what really set it into me like when we did that thing in May and it was like sort of on a Saturday and we didn't block the road off and it was just kind of like a, a thing that like oh we can do this and we can make merchandise and that will cover what we need it to cover. We don't need yeah. to charge people and do all this. It doesn't have to be a competition and all, and all this other crazy shit. Right. Just to chill. No, event. like it would be and the part of me goes, we should have a pinball tournament, but then part of me goes, but we kind of have to be like, guys, it, See, it's this like herding for, cats. This is yeah. This isn't for the <laughs> the normal people. This is like a, a fun thing for the car show people. But right. I think it's better oh. to just keep it all casual. Yeah. Instead of having that kind of stuff. I mean, we could do that someday. But One day we'll get there eventually. About. Yeah. <laughs> I did, dude. But having Steve DJ, like, I, we had all those technical difficulties on Memorial Day, and it was like, what the fuck? And then, but then after that, like, he crushed it. Yeah. On Labor Day, yeah, crushed he did it. Great man. And that worked out too because I was able to do that 50 50 drawing. And then that gave us, that allowed us to give Steve some money. You right. know what I mean? Which was even like, which was cool. Bonus. Yeah. Bonus. It, like, it made it to where it was like, oh, okay. So this year I'm just going to be like, hey, Steve, you heavily pimp the, heavily pimp out the 50 50 for us because that's just going to help you out. Right. You know what I mean? But it was so cool that Davey's kid won. Yeah. Like, I was hoping that was either going to be Davey's kid or your kid that wins. You right. know what I mean? I'm so glad it was Davey's kid. He went out and bought himself a new suit the next day. Nice. That's what he spent the money on. He went and bought a suit. He's like, I want to buy a suit. Nice. So that was cool. Yeah, that's awesome. But we appreciate you letting it us do the stuff there. You know what no I mean? No problem, man. Because a lot of people will, like, A, people will want a shit ton of money B, they'll just like golf at the idea or they make up excuses of why they don't want us around. You know what I mean? But in reality, what you find out is like everybody's cool. Right. And like car people people are chill. It's good people. And And I like to be a spot for the community to do stuff that the community likes to do. Right. Besides just pinball. Right. Um, So, yeah, you have events all the time. Yeah. It's a great Because you have heavy sports. Oh yeah, yeah everybody comes for Chiefs and do you guys Royals. do always do a thing on the weekends for the Chiefs game? Yeah, big uh, potluck, potluck table yeah. and everything. And then they used to do Chip and them used to roller do the derby after parties. Roller derby. After oh, we haven't done the crock the pot thing, the crocky pot thing, the crocky yeah. boys. I don't know why. I don't know. Yeah, well, you know, I think cro- everybody was hot on crock pots for a couple of years, yeah. and then they chilled down on it. Like, I think Logan had like a chili contest last weekend. Oh, nice! Which was cool because it was like fucking 
it was like so much buy-in to like enter your chili or whatever, or, or it's like five bucks to buy a bowl to or 20 bucks, something like that. And it was like winner takes all the money. Second place gets 40 bucks and it's or a bar tab. You know what I mean? It's like, right. oh, that's how you do that. Like right. whoever wins is like, yeah, you get, you get all this money. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how many people entered. I don't know. Right. But they had a lot of people there. So I'm sure. Nice. When I pulled up way after the game, there was still a shit ton of people there because I nice. went there to talk to him about some shit. So. We, I haven't done a chili cook-off in a while. But I should probably put that back on the list. <laughs> yeah, something. Yeah. Another crock pot of adventure. Yeah, right. that was always a thing. They were obsessed. They were Crocky fucking, boys. They were a, a Facebook, a Facebook group. group and everything. <laughs> Did they had stickers? Yeah. Fucking Chip will probably see this and immediately hit you up. I have a... Uh, I ended up taking it down and it's at my house, but I have a plaque for the Crocky Boys that's all lit up. It's made out of Corian because they used to work at Top Master. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. It's yeah, I need in to my get basement. The, the plaque made for the car show so we can put the Cool Cat of the Year winner up there every time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I also want to put it in a spot where there's like a photo. So we can just take a really fucking cheesy photo of whoever won and just yeah, have put it, it in there. there. So when people come in, they're like, who the f-? Like old right. school, like remember we used to go into a bar yeah. and there'd always be like random pictures. Like, who the fuck is this guy? Right. <laughs> yeah, Davies had a bunch of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Davies was littered with old photos and stuff where you're like, what the fuck is this guy? I mean, most of them were people that we knew but yeah uh, but if you didn't if you didn't know you weren't him. in the Davies family, you'd be like, Who the fuck is that guy? Yeah. Yeah, that was such a cool bar, man. And it had that weird room on the back that had the pool tables, the but the heat didn't lounge. really. The smoking lounge where the heat didn't really fucking work. So you freeze right. your ass off in there in the middle of winter. It had those like big old natural gas heaters in the corner. So yeah. I don't know. It's probably better that they didn't work. Yeah, probably <laughs> way better, dude. Yeah. That place would have lit up a long time ago. Right. That place got lit up. What time we got here? Oh, we're still doing good. Yeah. Well, what else have you got? Where? So you're working at? Are you still working at the sausage place? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go there tomorrow. Actually, I haven't been working there all summer just because uh, I've had Oliver, but he's right. back to school now, and I've been estimating sidewalks and yeah. driveways for Queen Construction. How's that? That's probably a pretty chill gig, right? Yeah, it's, it's yeah. super easy, man. If I can read a tape measure and can do math, so it fits right into my wheelhouse. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and um, and then I'm... A buddy of mine from Colorado is doing uh, commercial kitchen installations, like big range hoods, walking coolers, just everything you can imagine in like... Uh, kitchen a commercial kitchen and um he we got a job in parkville that i've been helping him install and then he's Sweet. bidding a bunch more work in the kansas city area so oh awesome yeah i might need a hand from time to time you know me i like to make money yeah i'm a whatever guy right we're in the middle of uh we ended up we were sharing space at the at casey's building with some other people they had some things happen they've all decided to not, they couldn't, they couldn't keep the space any longer. So Nico and I now have this entire fifteen hundred square foot space to ourselves. Nice. Uh, they're moving out at the end of the month, and we're getting ready. Our buddy, you know, Dave Sprinkle, our buddy Dave. Yeah. Dave's coming. We're gonna. He came today. I met him down there. We got some measurements, and we're gonna get a bunch of materials. Casey's gonna help with materials, and then we're gonna rebuild the wall so it's all legit and it like looks nice and nico and i are going to get it all done up and we're going to have a nice figure out some things we can do can we have like a a once a month night where we do something can we start doing like like how to custom paint classes because we got a big exhaust fan in there and shit right like what what can we do to like utilize the space and get that rent paid for while we're growing the print shop but man we've been doing the print shop's been going all right we got three jobs going right now where we're doing the design plus printing a bunch of stuff. We've did a design for our, my, the Cornwall guy that comes to my work, uh, yeah. to the hot rod shop. And he's like now on his like fifth reorder of stuff. Cause he's did he, this guy's got the racket baby slinging hoodies to cold mechanics 
for yeah. 50 bucks a throw right off the tool truck, hitting him with that credit line, baby. And he's just like every, it seems like every other week he's like, I need 25 more hoodies. <laughs> like, all right, I'll keep, I'll keep this screen around a while longer, dog. Right. <laughs> we'll keep rocking and rolling. Need to get so some 403. Yeah. Stuff going. We need to get some Don't shit Don't tell going. Zach or RL. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they're all, I mean. They know I spread the love. You spread the love. Actually, Zach, we're getting ready. We're, Zach got caught up last weekend, but we've been trying to have, we've been trying to get together and have a meeting with him and figure out how he's like, to- dude, totally. We told him what we were doing and, uh, you know, you never know like what an industry's like because some industries like the bar industry, which we saw with that crazy lady and Logan and the buzzard is like, <laughs> it's very cutthroat. Right. And like people, they, I don't fucking they, get that. At I all, don't man. either. You should be, you know, if one place is doing great, then I mean, we should all be together, man. It's, right. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. Like when she's like that, when she's does that comedy crawl. Yeah. What a crusher for everyone. Yeah, that's crazy. Because it takes man. them to four different places, all in that neighborhood. And we've done other crawls. Pub crawls and um, stuff, yeah. You know. But not knowing, and we hit up Zach, and we're like, hey, we'd like to meet with you and get some advice. And he has been nothing but excited about what we're doing. And like, he's like, dude, you don't even get it. Like, I did the same thing. I bought some equipment off this older couple from their garage. And I, that's how I started Union Press. And he, and he's like, and now, I was like, yeah, and now you're doing construction to add on to the building you own. Right. Like, yeah. He's like, dude, there's plenty of this work for everyone. There's always people. He's the real, he's the yeah. real deal. Man. Yeah. Zach rules. Yeah. Zach also there, the, like, the last person I saw before I got sober yeah. was Zach. Because I was like, you, let's get out of here. And we were at that place where they used to have this other like little side shop, and that's when things got kind of hairy. And we, ro- I robbed that guy with another guy, and you know, whatever. Whoops. We might have held him against his will. Whoops. Some people might call it kidnapping. Whatever. We've I did my time. Right. Uh, but Zach, I'm like Zach, let's get out of here. Let's let's go. And I got in the car with Zach, and right as we were leaving, like here came like. Pfft, Dude, I, we were both talking and kind of laughing about it. It's like literally the scariest moment probably of our lives is having 30 KCK cops with AR-15s, hands on the triggers, like shaking, pointing at you and us being like, oh, no, 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 please don't shoot us. Right. <laughs> Not that big of a deal, guys. Not that big of a deal. Right. Yeah. Oh, live and learn. Yeah. Yeah, we learned. <laughs> yeah. You know, whatever. But yeah, Zach's been the dog forever. Yeah, he's a great guy. He's been he's been the dog forever. I I'd like for him to I don't I don't know what the last time he's done. It. He used to do that skateboard art show every year. Yeah. And I really dug that. I think they're doing it at uh don't they do it at uh Escapist downtown? Maybe the I need to hit him up. I'd like show. to Nico and I should get in on the the next one of those and Yeah. Fucking do some shit. We well, got any events coming up? Uh, first Saturday of the month. Oh, we got Pins Giving coming up. Pins Giving the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Sick. Where everybody, all the pinball people, bring food. And oh, like a pinball Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, potluck, that's cool, fun. And then what day are the tournaments? Are they still Wednesdays? first Saturday of every month? No, Wednesdays. Uh, Nick does Wednesdays over at Solid State. Okay, now. dude. There's so since you are not in it anymore, uh, or haven't been in it. There's there's literally a pinball tournament every weekend at some different place cool. now in Kansas City. So um, the scene is crazy compared to what. So it used you kind of just held on to Saturdays as your day. Yeah, the first Saturday of the month is mine, and then uh, now are you guys all working together for the most part on those yeah, tournaments? Like, I mean, Nick uh, owns most of the other machines that are at, at the other places, right? So, um, so okay, so Nick is the only other like. There's other tournaments, but Nick is generally throwing them. So you guys right. are working together. It's either right? at Solid State or at Nubs Pub or at Pizza West where he has all yeah, of his machines. Yeah, he's had Pizza West over there for... He's had shit over there for a long time, right? Well, uh, this other dude had him over there. But um, when that guy got out of the business, Nick and Carrie bought in. And then Carrie has since moved to St. Louis and Nick just took it over all all by himself cool i mean he's got some help um to run things but uh 
yeah, yeah. but they're all his machines yeah because he's was always i remember back in the day him like tearing shit apart and like fixing them and yeah like, yeah i mean he's always been of, yeah from scooters to right to uh to whatever pinball machines to whatever yeah he he's one of those guys that likes to get into it yeah no i gotta holler at him and get him over here that'd be cool yeah but yeah no Christmas? You having a Christmas party this year? What are we uh, I'm sure we'll do an ugly sweater thing. Yeah, and then, I mean, long. you know, Chiefs game, Sundays, any day of the week, go to the 403 Club, 610. Reynolds Avenue. Reynolds Avenue. Avenue. Used to be the a cop bar. Yeah. <laughs> Which is so weird. <laughs> Used to be I, a pool hall. Yeah. The, it was a snitch a bar. That was a notorious snitch bar. That's where you'd go meet your... You could go meet somebody and inform real real easy down there. Back yeah, in the day. I don't I don't know that history. I, but. I always tell people that about Johnny's. Nobody believes me. <laughs> we fucking people. That's where all the snitches used to go. It's Johnny's on Seventh. They're like, that's not true, Tyler. I'm like, the other Johnny's is right next to the fucking fraternal order of police building, dude. Right. Like, what are you talking about? Right. None but cops in these places. For real. Well, Artie, thanks for coming over. Go find Thanks them on, uh, what is it, 403 Club on Instagram and, and Facebook. Facebook. Don't follow his personal page. He doesn't want you on there. <laughs> That's why I tell people now. Some people are like, don't follow my personal shit. Uh, I don't just, care, just a, man. Just the bar page. I still have somehow some ridiculous amount of friends that I must have served a drink to once. Oh, yeah. Mine's like yeah. that, too. I see that. And I, on Facebook, I'm just like, oh, I don't even know these people. Yeah, I just, right. I like put shit up. I put the clips up. And then occasionally I'll post like, cause I got, we got our show, that informal ball thing we're doing on the 30th. Yeah. I can't wait, man. That'll be rad. Uh, it's going to be a good time. Um, but yeah, same thing. All right. All right, man. We'll catch you all later. Later.